Hello, I am Alan Harrelson, and this is the Old Carolina Pipe Cottage. Thank y'all for stopping by. I'm gonna talk about corn cobs and aromatic blends today, and I am smoking a Say Wolf customized cob. Can you see that? Say Wolf customized cob. I think it's S A E W U L F. He's on Instagram. And uh, this is my first that I ordered from him. I just bought another one that should ship out this week. Customized cobs. I love them. Acrylic stem, hardwood shank. It's reinforced with some mortar in the bottom of the bowl to allow for longevity. In my mind, there's nothing more American than a corn cob pipe filled with aromatic tobacco. Now, a lot of people would disagree with that, and that's fine, but when it comes to the pipe world, I can't think of anything more American than that. We have a lot to be thankful for when it comes to the accomplishments of our European friends. It is from Europe that we get the wonderful origins of briar pipes, and I enjoy briar for a lot of different reasons, but today I want to talk about cobs. Cobs are... Just, just beautiful works of art that have a lot to do with American agriculture. We're going to talk about that as well. Now, to me, the most appropriate and iconic blends for a cob pipe are aromatic. And by the way, I'm smoking in this pipe today Rivendell from the Country Squire in Jackson, Mississippi. Mr. John David Cole. Aromatic blends are belittled a lot among pipe aficionados. And that's okay, but I think that we need to revisit what quality aromatic tobacco looks like. It has a lot to do with uh, a chemical taste. I think a lot of people just don't like a chemical taste that comes across in some of the over-the-counter blends that we can find in this country. Now, cob pipes. Cob pipes harken back to a time in this country when it was predominantly agricultural. Cob pipes have origins in the 19th century corn belt. Even now, pipe, uh, corn cob pipes begin by tending a piece of land. It begins in the heart and the mind and the work of a dedicated farmer. And when you're smoking a cob, you are enjoying the product of agriculture. The pipe grew from the earth, quite literally. The tobacco came from the earth. You are participating in a, in a way that's sort of difficult to do uh, now with American agriculture on so many levels. And so when I smoke a humble, basic corn cob, I am reminded of times gone by, a time in the United States when people knew how to make do. That's what it was called when I was coming up as a kid. Is you just learn how to make do with what you have, what's set before you. Uh, historian David Danbaum once said that uh, America was born in the country, but it moved to the city. We all know about Bing Crosby smoking his famous merchant service pipe and C.S. Lewis enjoying his briar uh, filled with three nuns tobacco. But corn cob smokers do not take a back seat to these giants. Corn cobs probably outsold briar in this country during the pipe heyday of the mid 20th century. The world is complicated but the corn cob pipe remains refreshing and exciting with its simplicity. Now, growing up as a child, I was raised in the rural South. And um, hang on a minute, let me relight this thing. Grandma and Grandpa watched the Beverly Hillbillies on television, Petticoat Junction, Green Acres. These are the things I was raised with. Now, they were reruns by the time I came along. 
but I distinctly remember the times when corn cob pipes were featured on those television shows. It never crossed my mind at any time when I was coming up as a child that the rural culture I was raised in was somehow backwards, somehow unsophisticated. And I think sometimes that's what people see when they see a corn cob. I never see that. When we watch television, we watch shows that featured country people living out an everyday country life. And after Thanksgiving every year, we would look forward to the Christmas shows and Frosty the Snowman would be featured with his iconic corn cob. From my perspective, this is my perspective alone, cobs do best with aromatic blends. Now, I've discovered that many folks who fancy themselves pipe and tobacco connoisseurs often detest aromatic blends of any kind. I find this odd. Most blends are going to be topped or flavored in some way. Very seldom will you find a tobacco blend that has absolutely nothing but tobacco in it. There are toppings or casings on most pipe blends you'll find on the market. But... There's something heavenly that happens with a good aromatic. Heavenly in its aroma and its flavor and its presentation. I appreciate the flavor and the excellence of a mild or a full English, a Virginia Perique, a Burley, dark-fired Kentucky. I appreciate and enjoy all of those blends at different times. Many times of the year I'll crave an English blend. Sometimes of the year I'll crave an aromatic. Sometimes it's Virginia's. But the one blend that the one the one blend family that seems to go from season to season in my rotation are aromatics, regardless as to what else I'm smoking. But it's important to recognize that not all aromatics are created equal. What makes for a good aromatic blend in this case? And why do I prefer to smoke aromatics out of a cob? Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That is good. Now, this is not to say that I don't smoke aromatics out of a meerschaum or a uh, briar or even a clay sometime. But the cob seems to transmit a unique element of flavor to an aromatic blend that I have not experienced through other mediums. It's as if the natural flavor of the corn crop itself is enhancing the elements, the flavor of the tobacco. It, it, it's adding an interesting and appropriate new condimental note to the tobacco blend. Uh, the blends that uh, I'm talking about, they, they, they need to be good to start with. There are several blends that have a chemical taste and I can't stand them. I'm not going to name them, but many of you can probably figure out what they are. I don't like tasting chemical. Anything that tastes unnatural, I don't like it. So I prefer aromatics that are expertly blended. And there are many blending houses across the country and in Europe that offer profoundly interesting and high quality aromatic blends. I'm thinking of Cornell and Dill, uh, McBaron over in Denmark, Sutliff produces some good things. And, but we should not forget the local brick and mortar stores. Some of my absolute, if not my absolute favorite, as a matter of fact, I will say it. My favorite aromatic blends are produced by local blenders in the small brick and mortar businesses. I can think of three right off the top of my head right now that uh, blend my personal favorite aromatic blends. And I'll just mention one. I'll mention the first one, which is my favorite right now, and that's Arrowhead. Uh, from Paul's Pipe Shop in Flint, Michigan. 
Arrowhead is just fantastic. It's got a wonderful mixture of high quality tobacco leaf and whatever casing or topping they use complements the tobacco in a way that allows the natural flavor of the tobacco to come through at the same time that you're enjoying that pleasant, wonderful aroma, which is also nice for the people who are around you. Let's face it, aroma is what attracts a lot of new pipe smokers to the hobby. Uh, if you want to know more about aromatic blends that I would personally recommend, you can reach out to me. Drop a comment down below and, and I'll certainly answer that. A little Pellegrino for us today. So, just a few ramblings about corn cob pipes. To the corn cob pipe, may it long live as a symbol of joy and peace for those who enjoy its simple pleasures. Again, I'm Alan Harrelson with the Old Carolina Pipe Goddage. Glad y'all stopped by today.